In this video, I'll show you how to use a low Z meter to detect ghost voltages, compromised voltage supplies, and floating or loose neutrals in both 120 volt and 240 volt circuits. At the end of the video, I'll provide some additional resources to make sure you know when and when not to use the low Z meter. What is a ghost voltage? It is a voltage that appears on an undefined conductor due to proximity to other conductors or magnetic induction. Although you can detect such a voltage with a regular voltmeter, its ability to supply current is very weak. Therefore, if you put a load on this voltage, it can almost completely disappear. A common scenario would be that of a piece of wire in a Romex bundle that isn't connected to anything, such as this ground wire right here. We have a 120 volt source where this is neutral and this is L1 or 120 volts. Note that this voltmeter is set for traditional voltage reading mode where one side is connected to neutral and the other side is connected to that ground wire which is again is not connected to anything but is just in close proximity to this black wire which has 120 volts potential connected to it. So this here is an undefined conductor should have any voltage on it at all. However, we're reading about 31 volts. This voltage has almost no ability to provide any current. When this meter is in regular voltage reading mode, it's greater than 5 million ohm input resistance, puts practically no load on the wire, and thus reads the ghost voltage. Now, if we switch to low Z mode, you'll notice that the voltage reading is now zero because we're using low Z mode, which has an input resistance of just over 3000 ohms, a relatively heavy load is placed on the ghost voltage and it disappears. Therefore, by using low Z, we have easily determined that what we were reading was a ghost voltage. All right, so we have a voltage tester here that tells us we have a good outlet. But actually, this is not a good outlet. It's got an issue. It's unable to power anything under load. Under tra traditional volt reading mode with a regular voltmeter, this outlet reads 121, almost 122 volts, which would normally tell us we have a good outlet. So despite that, when I plug this light in to this outlet, it doesn't work. And look what happens to the voltage when that light is plugged in. It drops down to a couple of volts. Let's try that again. Take it out, it's 121. If I put this light in there, it drops down to a couple of volts. So we have a compromised outlet here. Is this a loose neutral? Or is this a loose hot? How do we know that? Well, so if you check from ground to hot, you should read 120, 120 volts, right? Which is what we're reading on, on regular volt reading mode. However, if you put it on low Z mode, ground to hot, ah, there we go. We're reading about 7 volts. So that means that it's not neutral that's moving away from ground. It's hot that's moving away from hot. It's hot that's going down toward ground. So by doing this, putting the low resistance between hot and ground, that tells us the hot line is not able to supply enough current even to overcome this, this 3,000 ohms of resistance here. So that tells us we have a loose upstream connection on the hot side. Now, just to note, if this was a GFCI outlet, you could not do this because the low resistance, the low input resistance of this meter would cause too much current to flow from hot to ground and that would cause the GFCI outlet to trip. So you can't do that. So what would you do in that case? You could just put it on regular voltage reading mode or low Z and you could put that load back in there. And then you can check from 
hot to neutral and see if that pulls neutral up. Is it pulling neutral up to 120 volts? Then you know you have a loose neutral. But if it doesn't pull neutral up to 120 volts or thereabouts or doesn't pull neutral significantly away from ground, then that tells you that it's not neutral that's compromised. Neutral is solid. That's the hot line that's compromised. So if you have a GFC outlet, you can still you can still do the test, but you just can't test from ground to hot because by definition, a GFCI outlet will trip if you have any significant current flow, not even significant, but enough current flow from hot to ground to exceed that six milliamp threshold. And, and that a low Z meter will definitely do that. So, but in all, that's all you can tell if a compromised outlet using a low Z meter. test this outlet, it's going to tell me that we have a good outlet. It's reading 121 volts, actually. So, but I know it's not a good outlet because if I plug this light bulb into it, this night light with a 4 watt bulb in it, look what happens. Kills the outlet, knocks it down to about 3 volts. I'm going to switch this to low Z mode. Just like this. So now let's see what we get on low Z. So now we're only reading 11.2 volts. Now what is this caused by? Is this caused by a loose neutral or is it caused by a loose hot? What you could do is you could measure from ground to hot here and see what you get. In this case we get 122 volts. So that tells us that the hot lead is okay. And by process of elimination, that tells us that there must be an issue with the neutral line, okay? A common residential electric dryer here that does not power up. Cases like this, First thing you want to do is look for a voltage problem. I've already determined this voltage source, this outlet here, is compromised. We tested it using this traditional voltmeter and it tests fine. But when it's under load, when the appliance is plugged into it, it fails. So how can you test this outlet? Let's test this with a low Z meter. This is the client CL800 low Z meter. There is a link to this in the description of this video. So let's just check from here to here. Now using a low Z meter, we have 14.75 volts. So that's enough of that actually that 3000 ohm load is actually dragging that all the way down. So but now what the low Z meter can also do, they can tell you which one of these legs is bad. So we should get around 120 volts from here to here or from here to there. So by doing this, this will tell us which one is bad. Okay, so from this leg to this leg, we have 123 volts. So we know that this leg is good. You know, by the way, this test works just as well for three or four wire outlets because we're not involving ground. And the reason we're not involving ground is because Ground is almost never used. We have no way of knowing what the integrity of ground is. We're not going to use it as a reference. Now let's test this one with respect to neutral. Ah, so this right here we're measuring, with respect to neutral, we're measuring 7 volts. So that tells us that this leg right here is compromised. It's probably, there, that means there's a loose connection upstream of this leg here. That is allowing it to read full voltage when you're using a traditional meter because of the high input resistance of the traditional meter. Using a low Z meter puts such a low resistance on it, creates this thing called a voltage divider that drags this voltage down and reveals that this leg is bad. So somewhere upstream here, we have a loose connection. So that's how you test that using a low Z meter. Okay, so this is the low Z meter. Okay, this puts about a 3,000 ohm impedance across the test leads here. 
hold that so you can read it. All right, so I'm going to test from leg to leg. And we're getting 247 volts. So that tells us right there that leg to leg is good because we just put a load on it and we read 247 volts. All right, well, let's test from leg to neutral. We should be getting about 120 volts here. We're getting 7 volts. 7 volts. So that means the low Z meter is pulling this all the way up to all the way up to within 7 volts of L1. Let's try it with respect to L2. We're getting 7 volts also. So it's pulling neutral up to within 7 volts of L2, which means that this is pulling Either one of these legs is pulling neutral up to about 113 volts. Neutral should not do that. So this clearly tells us we have a bad neutral right here. You can do this with a four wire or a three wire cord. It doesn't matter because we're not involving ground in this test here. That's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel.